All right, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love every Saturday. And you're welcome to join us, by the way. (laughs) All right, the details are in the description box. You know, one thing that we don't understand is, is sometimes why God even has a church. When we look at all that God is doing, he's got me in the book of Acts for the most part. But... There are things that happen in the church body, and we all need to be connected. So for those of you who don't have a family, a church family, get in into one. You really need that. Um, yes, there will be hurt feelings. There will be offenses, because any place where people are, damage gets done. But because we're in a corporate anointing of God and we are together in holy communion, there is also healing. And there, are, and some of those hurts are necessary for us to see where we need to grow personally. So understand that there are a lot of adjustments being made. And if you're looking for a perfect church, look no further because there are none. Tell you right now, if you got people in the church, there is no such thing as a perfect church because there is no such thing as a perfect person unless you're looking to Jesus. He is the only perfect one that's walked the face of this planet. (laughs) Okay, so what we're going to deal with is we're going to deal with the book of Acts. And there are times. When things happen, now I'm going to share this real quick because this is why I think I'm getting some of these scriptures. I believe that God is getting us ready to move more in the supernatural than we've ever experienced in our normal lives with the Lord. And the reason for that is, let's say, let's put it like this. Let's make an example. You know, me and my analogies, I like to paint pictures so that we can really grasp what's being said. We are right now in the dead of winter. This is in the natural now. We're in the dead of winter. It's cold out there for most of us, except for some of you who are blessed to live in the tropics. It's cold out there. Now, the colder it is, the more power you need to put heat in your house. You need to use more electricity and you need to use more gas and whatever other sources of of utility you use to heat up your home. What's happening now in this day and age is we're in the last days and it's getting dark out there and the demons are coming out in spades. They're coming out in droves. They're coming out in swarms. They are infiltrating the airwaves, the, 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 the air, the atmosphere, the regions, the cities, the locations. They're infiltrating like crazy, like never before. And what happens is there comes a point where God has to turn on more power. You get it? He's got to turn on more power. He's got to raise the ante up. He's got to raise the bar. And some of us are going to begin walking in more supernatural power than we've ever walked in before. Some of us are going to experience the supernatural more than ever before. Some of us are going to be gifted. Our giftings are going to be more empowered. They're going to be more in depth. Some of you that hear or see in the spirit realm are going to hear and see more. Some of you that have never seen or heard in the spirit realm are going to start hearing and seeing what you've never heard or seen before. It's not the experiences are not meant to, inc- to incite fear. And that's why you need to really get into the scriptures and know who Jesus is in the scheme of things. Because when you really, really know 
who he is and you understand the authority he carries, there's nothing out there in darkness that should scare you. Because with you having Jesus in you, with you having the Holy Spirit moving and, and expressing himself through you, when you know you have access to all the power that comes through the Holy Spirit, knowing the power and authority that's in the name of Jesus, you have no need to fear. I don't care what they talk about on the news. I don't care what threats come across from this one, that one, or the other one. I don't care how many things go bump in the night. I don't care if you see the demon looking right at you. If you feel the demon touching you, all you got to do is use the authority you already have. Because God equipped us with everything we need. And as the demons and as the darkness and as the evil increases in power, guess what? God's got you covered. You've got all the power you need to handle whatever increases take place on this planet. So don't fear. Don't be intimidated. You've got four weapons you can use at your disposal. Number one, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Number two, prayer. Lord, help me, protect me, surround me with your guardian, warring, ministering angels, and keep all evil as far away from me as the east is from the west. Three, you've got the word of God. You've got to quote it. When Satan makes you feel like a nobody, you tell Satan, I am, you, you don't have to talk to him like a conversation. Just ignore him and quote the word. Ignore those negative feelings and quote the word. Ignore those negative thoughts and emotions and quote the word at it. And what you quote will be things like, I am the head and not the tail. I am wonderfully and beautifully made in the love of God. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nothing shall by any means harm me. If God be for me, who can be against me? <laughs> and that's why you need to read scripture. I could pull those scriptures out of my head because I read scripture. I have read scripture down through the years. I have listened to preaching down through the years. When you listen to the word play on the internet or on a tape and you read the word and you hear the word being preached, it builds up your strength. But the word also drives the enemy away. The other thing you must do is resist the devil and he will flee. So when you resist, you are engaging your own will. You don't just sit there and let God do it all. You got to be involved in the battle too. Your will must be involved. And there are times that you must obey. You must resist the temptations and obey to the point of tears even because what God is doing is building your strength your inner man he's the more you obey the stronger you get the more you disobey the weaker you get so in order to drive the enemy off your turf you've got to obey 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 at any cost even if it means losing your job, even if it means that you get laughed at, even if it means that you get mocked and people don't want to be bothered with you, they don't like you because you don't want to join in with, the, with their festivities of mischief. Guess what? You may have some lonely days. You may have some moments of rejection. And you may have some emotional pain resisting what you know your body wants to do. 
But when you obey till it hurts, baby, God comes nearer and nearer and nearer and Satan gets further and further away. So I'm trying to break it down so you get it. Now let's go to the book of Acts. You have to be careful who you hook up with in the body of Christ. Because there are many out there that get caught up. This is your word of warning here. There are many out there that get caught up. They confuse the Holy Ghost with demonic activity. And you will find in churches, in some churches, not all churches, some, hopefully fewer than many, hopefully fewer, there will be some churches that engage in the supernatural, but the supernatural is not of God. And that's where you have to have the spirit of, or the gift of discerning of spirits. And the reason I say that, see, when you look at <clears throat> what Philip did in the book of Acts, Acts chapter eight, I'm just going to paint a picture real quick. Verse five, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. In other words, before Simon got hooked up with the, with the people of God, he, his lifestyle, he was all into witchcraft and sorcery. So it says, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one <laughs> to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying, this man is the, has the great or is the great power of God. And to him, they had regard because that of long time, he had bewitched them with sorceries. You hear that? But when they believed Philip's preaching, the thing concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. This is the guy involved in witchcraft and sorcery. He believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet <clears throat> he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized. In other words, the Holy Ghost hadn't fallen on them yet. They were only baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17, then laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon, that sorcerer, listen, when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Now, let me tell you this. All right. So that you understand what's going on. Every church, every ministry needs financial backing. When people do full-time ministry, they're not out there working a job. They're doing full-time ministry. So they don't have any other source of income other than what people give. Do you hear, do you hear what I'm saying? So when you hook up at a church or you hear a minister on TV and they tell you, if you send um, $41 for Psalms 49, if you send 
uh, $121 for Psalms 121 to be activated in your life. That's a form of witchcraft. Whatever you give, you give from your heart because you're able to give it, because you want to give it, because you think the ministry or the minister is worthy of you giving. Don't you ever let anybody twist your arm with a whole bunch of trinkets and say, I see God blessing you with a great financial blessing. So let's activate your faith and give a hundred dollars, give five hundred dollars, give a thousand dollars to activate your faith so that you can receive this blessing that I just prophesied. Don't you ever go for that crap. Don't ever go for it. That is witchcraft right there in front of your eyes. If somebody says, oh, you come to the service tonight and you're going to leave with gold and you're going to be able to cash in on all that gold. God is not a materialistic God. He does not mind you being rich. He does not mind you being filthy rich. As long as your heart is so pure and blessed that nobody around you that you know is left wanting. Nobody around you is left needing anything because you know you got so much riches, you can take care of them too. And that levels out the playing field. That means you leave nobody around you in a poor state when you're rich. That, that blesses God's heart. Not bringing money to the church so you could go home with gold all over you. Do you understand what I'm saying? There, there are forms of witchcraft that have infiltrated the church, and you've got to know how to discern. You've got to know how to discern. Yes, it is right to give, because when the minister is ministering to your spirit, you ought to minister to them from the material. But you are not to minister to activate anything. If God's going to give you something, what God has for you is for you. Your disobedience can counteract a blessing. Your disobedience can cancel a good thing getting ready to happen in your life. You're turning your back on God can make you miss out on a lot of good things that could be happening for you. But your obedience, God's just going to bless you because you're trying to obey. You may not do a perfect job of it, but you're trying. God honors that and he rewards obedience. But you don't come to a church and fork out $50 so so you can so God can rain gold from heaven. You don't fork out $200 so God can bless you with that prophecy that somebody told you about how one day you're going to get a check and it's going gonna, it, uh, gonna to take you out of all of your debt. So you better give now if you want to act like, you know, show God you believe what. No, don't fall for that crap. Another one you don't do. And this is a pride issue. If you are in a, in a service. And they tell you, everybody stand up that's going to give $1,000 or $10,000, 1000 to 10000 Everybody stand up. And you come and you march and, and you it's, the, it's what I call the ego parade. And then they sit down. Now, the rest of you are going to give uh, 500 to 1000 You stand up. Listen, don't you dare get involved in that crap. I don't care if you're going to give $10,000 or $20,000. You sit your butt down till they just pass the plate around for the poor folk. Don't you let anybody know how much you give. Because when you announce how much you're giving, you're canceling out your blessing. What God says in his word is, what you do secretly, God will reward you openly. Hmm. So if 
You announce what you're giving, and that's what churches will play on your ego. You want to be seen. If you announce what you're giving publicly, that's the end of your reward. Your reward is your ego gets stroked, and you get to sit down with your chest big. But that's all that happens for you. That's a flesh thing. See, when you're in a lot of these churches, you've got to beware. Just like when Simon offered money to pay for the gift of God. Oh boy, he got on his case big time. Because that is a slap in God's face. You cannot buy his power. Don't you ever go to a church thinking you're going to buy his power. Don't you ever offer money for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. His gifts are free. You be careful about that. And you be careful about anybody that wants to charge you so that when they prophesy over you, I've seen it on YouTube, y'all. Now, when you see somebody say, if you'd like to bless this ministry, that's fine. That's a free will offering. But when somebody is on there saying, uh, I'm going to do a live stream. And those of you who want to come on, um, if, if you bless with $10 or more, I'm going to give you a prophecy. You run from that. Don't even click on the channel, baby. That is witchcraft right there working right in front of your eyes. It's, it's, it's a charlatan, a spiritual charlatan working on you. Don't mess with that. If you want power, obey. You want power, you live a holy life. You want power, you draw close to God. You want power, you constantly ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost, baptize you with the Holy Ghost. There's, there's a baptism, but there are many in fillings. You ask God always to fill you with the Holy Ghost, always. Don't leave home without them, but don't play into these little, these little money grubbing games that these guys play. I've seen it. People give their all, their social security checks, their, you know, old folks, they live on a fixed cut income as it is. And then somebody's out there talking about, uh, if you give a sacrificial offering, I will lay a blessing on your life and God will do wonders. Oh, don't you dare. That's a wolf in sheep's clothing. So what I'm doing is, making you mindful of being careful where you sow your seed, where you plant your body and become a part of. Don't become a part of a new age movement. Don't become a part of witchcraft. There are churches that exercise witchcraft. They include dealing with, with crystals and and uh, sage and, and certain types of incense that are supposed to usher in certain levels of enlightenment. Baby, you want enlightenment, you better go to God. You better go to his word. All that, all that outside trinket stuff, you hands off, y'all. And if you know anybody who participates in that, you, you leave them alone completely. Leave that alone. Touch not the unclean thing. All right. So I'm not going to talk long on this, but what I'm trying to do is open your eyes to how much. See, God is going to move us into the supernatural realm in a stronger way, at a stronger level. But you must be wary. You must be aware. You must be on guard of all of the unreasonable facsimiles that are out there so you don't get connected with a demonic entity thinking you're being empowered by the Holy Ghost. You hear me? That's why you better read his word. If you don't want to read anything else in the Bible, read the red letters. Those are Jesus's words. But you read the word. And the more you read, the more you'll want to read. I guarantee you.
because you'll start seeing things you never knew was there. Wow! And you start getting supernatural revelation by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that will increase your hunger more and more. And you realize God can talk to me through the word. And when you have questions, see, some of you, you get on the phone. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think if I do this? What do you think? No, you ask God and put that Bible in your lap and say, Lord, tell me what I should do. And God will lead you to scripture. You'll get a a scripture in your mind. Oh, James 5. Oh, well, Lord, this happened at work. What should I do? The Lord may lead you to James chapter 3. You read James chapter 3. What is God telling you to do? Watch your mouth. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Be careful. Don't bless God and curse man. Watch yourself now. I know it's tough out there, but watch yourself. See, God will readjust you and and realign you and give you your bearings and straighten you up, make you fly right through his word. And when you read the word, not only do you get the instruction, but the word empowers you to do what the instruction says to do or not to do. Do you hear me? Here's an example. I was leaving the the bedroom uh, one morning and Milton called me and I got an instant annoyance. Ah, I'm not even out the bed. What do you need now? That's my human side. Love my baby, but I was tired, y'all, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I was tired. So, As soon as I did that, I grabbed the Bible, said, Lord, what do you have for me before I go downstairs? I said, I'll be down in a minute. And the Lord immediately led me to a book in Psalms, Psalms 37. And I said, okay, I'll read that. That's blessing and all that good stuff, you know. Don't be bothered by people who, you know. I'm like, okay, I'll read it. But I came across one sentence that said, forsake wrath. Hmm. As soon as I read forsake wrath, that annoyance went up in a puff of smoke. And guess what? I never got annoyed again. Because as soon as I read that word forsake wrath, and it hit me, I said, Lord, forgive me for being annoyed. And I ask you to remove that far from me. So that's not one of my reactions. I renounce wrath in the name of Jesus. I never felt another moment of anger or annoyance all the way till Milton passed away. God's word has power. But if you're not reading God's word, you will have little power. Because when you read his word, it ignites an ability in you that you normally would not have. You hear me? All right. I hope you took that one to the bank. So you have to be careful where you plant your seeds, who you hang out with, who you worship with, who you get involved with in the things of God. Because if you start seeing confusion, mumbling, griping, jealousy, envy, backbiting, fussing, cussing, witchcraft, uh, new age, uh, bribing people to give. And here you giving and giving and giving, waiting for that magic wand to pop you with that blessing. And the people that are pouring in to your spirit are not being touched at all because they're the ones that should be given to, at least some of the ones that you should be given to, and you're not doing anything for them. But you're out there on TV with this charlatan telling you give $790 for Psalm 79. Come on now, you gotta be careful. There's a lot, there are a lot of people who are gifted by God, y'all. They are operating in their calling. 
but they have mixed in the corruption that goes with the flesh into their ministry. You got to be careful when their focus is about money. You got to be careful when they have you in church and they're trying to drum up all kind of little supernatural manifestations. And No, God will do his thing his way. He'll have you shake. He'll have you cry. He'll have you moan. He'll have you uh, laugh. He'll have you do whatever. But let the Holy Ghost be doing it. Don't let man be trying to get you to do stuff. Be careful with that. And don't let everybody lay hands on you. Another thing you pray when you're in a group setting and people are getting ready to pray for you, you remember this now. I bind all transferences of demons. You hear me? You get in the habit of doing that because not everybody that lays hands on you is holy. And not every hand laid on you is holy hands. Some of them are very unclean very unholy. You have no idea what those hands were doing the day before. What they were involved in. What they were handling. Or who they were handling. So you be careful. It's not a fear thing I'm saying. It's for you to be on guard. Don't just be gullible out there thinking everybody that says Lord, Lord is of the Lord. They're not. When you're in the body of Christ, that's why he gave us the gift of discerning of spirits. We must discern, not be suspicious. Now, there is a difference. Being suspicious is looking under the carpet, wiping your white glove. Yeah, I know I'm going to find some mess up in here. No, no, I'm not talking about suspicion or casting suspicion. I'm talking about discernment. There's a big difference there. All right. I think I've talked long enough. I'm going to stop for the sake of time. And if God has me continue this next week, I will. We'll see what the Lord says.